So what is your take on mycoplasma's effect on fertility issues? <laughs> yeah, that's such a good question. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. Um, we don't have time. I, I have seriously. <laughs> I will tell you, but as luck would have it, let me just put this up briefly. Uh, this is, uh, you know, we always come prepared here, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So this isn't necessarily for you guys, but I brought this just in case, right? In case some speaker was sick or something, couldn't make it, we had more time. But uh, mycoplasma. Um, so this is what I covered in another lecture. Um, I'm talking about these, uh, one, two, three, mostly those three things, right? For mycoplasma in particular. Mm -hmm. Because um, these are all hot topics. Brucellosis maybe a little less so um, right now, but herpes is a hot topic. Mycoplasma is a hot topic, right? So um, let me just get to that real quick. Um, if you have a sec. If you have a sec. You guys are on a sec. Right? Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. this is a good one. We um, like to talk about the herpes, too. Oh, you would. Do we have time? <laughs> Can we go quick? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let's do the herpes. So this is just a, this is a um, synopsis of herpes, okay? Uh, quickly. So this is a viral infection, right? It's canine herpes, uh, uh, virus of one. Okay, that's what we're talking about. It's everywhere in the environment, just FYI. Herpes, dog herpes is everywhere, okay? There's tons of herpes viruses, right? It, it's been called one of, um, what did I read? Uh, one of the most advanced viruses because it will infect a host to think about human beings, right? Uh, chicken pox, mm -hmm. right, when you're young? <coughs> That's, it's the same thing that makes shingles when you're old. <coughs> the same virus, it never left. But you're fine your whole life and spreading it around to everybody else your whole life, okay? <laughs> so that's kind of how it works. It's not exactly how it works, but it's kind of how it works, okay? Um, canine herpes virus is kind of the same. Um, they have it, it comes up again, it goes away, it comes up again, it goes away. Um, so it's just everywhere. Uh, reproductive tract and respiratory tracts in dogs. Um, aerosol transmission, that's a really smart thing if you're a virus. Yeah. If a dog or person can sneeze and it gets transmitted, right? So that's why I think it's a pretty smart virus, herpes in general. This is what it causes in, uh, a, um, oh, transmission. Uh, coughing, sneezing, nose licking, those two dogs are passing it on right now. Okay, so if one of them has it and the other one didn't have it, now it has it. Okay, so that's how easy it is. That's the point for herpes. Okay, uh, and then breeding too. Obviously. Okay, adult symptoms usually none. You don't even know they have it. Okay, sometimes it looks like kennel cough, so sometimes they'll cough a few days. Usually they don't get the big fever or anorexia or anything like that with it, but sometimes they'll cough a couple days. It does cause abortion in dogs. Okay, we'll talk about that just briefly. I know I'm going quick, but here's what it does in neonates, they die. Mm -hmm. So if, they're, if they were born from a bitch who did not impart appropriate immunity to that neonate by nursing colostrum the first 12 to 24 hours at the most, they're, and they're exposed to it within the first two weeks of life, they will make it, likely. Mm -hmm. They can make it, but Oftentimes they don't. This is what they do, that persistent crying thing. Yeah. People have seen that weakness, lethargy, lack of suckle, painful abdomen and bloating, abnormal feces, they, then they get cold, then they have nasal discharge, and then they have hemorrhage and bleeding. And so it's a terrible thing for neonates, okay? Um, here's how we diagnose it. Titer tests, titer tests in adults. The problem is with titer tests is they're tricky. We can tell if they've been exposed most of the time. I'm saying most of the time because sometimes we'll do titer tests and we know they've been exposed, but it was years and years and years ago, and now their titer is very, very low and almost undetectable. It doesn't mean they're not going to pass immunity to the babies. <coughs> it means we can't detect the titer. So titers are tricky to interpret, so they're not super reliable. Okay. Necropsy in neonates, that's most of the way time. I used to have pictures of what the lesions look like and they were just terrible, so I took them out. But there are little hemorrhagic lesions on their kidneys, sometimes on their livers, places like that. Okay. Uh, treatment. Adults. Treat for kennel cough. 
right? What is the treatment for chemical cough? For this, it's not an antibiotics, right? It's uh, decreased activity, so keep them quiet. Uh, same as uh, people with the flu, right? right. Fluids, rest, right. etc. Uh, antibiotics if you need them for secondary infection, that kind of stuff. So that's dog treatment. In neonates, we get really aggressive with neonates if we think that they have herpes, because we're gonna try to save them. So we can give them antiviral medicine. This is the big thing. We wanna increase their body temperature because the virus doesn't replicate very well at higher, higher temperatures. Okay, so that's a big one. It's tricky though, because at, at maintaining their body temperatures 98, 99, when they only want to be 95, I mean, it only wants to be around 95, and we jack them up to 99, they can get dehydrated quicker, so you just have to be on top of it a little bit more. Okay, so that's what we do with the neonates. And then fluid support, um, nutrition, antibiotics, if they need it for secondary infection, it's not gonna help with our virus. All right, the best thing is prevention. There is no vaccine in the US for doggy herpes. Okay, there is for other species, particularly horses. So make sure the bitch is immunocompetent prior to whelping. Not when she's pregnant, before she's pregnant. Make sure, she, don't expose her while she's pregnant, then she'll abort. If she's naive, then she'll abort if we expose her. How do you expose her? You come to places like this where there's a lot of dogs. Okay, I don't really like dog parks, but there's probably a lot of herpes there. Make sure they uh, make sure they nurse on a on an immunocompetent bitch the first uh, 24 hours of life and maybe even 12 hours. If if she if we know that she's naive and she's pregnant, we got to isolate her and ourselves from her and ourselves. I mean, we have to wash well before we come in the house and take care of a bitch who's pregnant, okay? Okay, let's get through brucellosis. Bruce, Bruce Can we do brucellosis real fast? Skip it, skip it. Okay. Let's get to that. <laughs> let's get to that. There it is. Okay, that's bacterial infection. This is tricky. Uh, mycoplasma is tricky. <coughs> so almost all bacteria have cell walls except this one, urea plasma is on the list, there's a couple others. The reason that it's tricky for us is that a lot of the antibiotics work through compromising the bacterial cell wall. So certain antibiotics won't work on this particular bacteria. So that's why we need to appreciate it doesn't have a cell wall. So there's lots of different mycoplasma. Now I'm throwing urea plasma in the same Oh, is mycoplasma, okay? Mycoplasma, urea plasma, look at them the same, just FYI. Okay, common cause again, here we go with kennel cough. So uh -huh. this is the same thing, right? Darn it, my dog got that kennel cough vaccine, and now my dog has kennel cough. They all look the same. Bordetella, that's what we vaccinate for. Mycoplasma, no vaccine. Herpes, no vaccine. So if you run a kennel, it's good to know this, because even though they got that darn kennel cough vaccine, they got exposed to something else. Herpes, mycoplasma, something else, okay? So it's good to explain, like, you know, going to the kennel is like taking your kid to daycare. Mm -hmm. Kids there with some funny noses, right? Same thing. Um, so mycoplasma commensal, right? So this is an interesting thing. We think that, we know that about 50% of bitches that we culture have mycoplasma. And they have no reproductive problems at all. Okay? So they have mycoplasma growth. So what we think is that it's this commensal species living in there with the other bacteria, strep, staph, E. coli, enterobacter, all these other things that live in the vaginal vault. And it's just hanging out there too, and it's fine. However, if the defenses are down or the bit or and we get a pure growth, then it's it's opportunistic. Now it's causing problems, right? And so it's one of those things, if I scratch my skin or get a step on a nail or something, there's stuff on my skin that's gonna cause problems because now it has the opportunity to cause an infection. And really it's the same thing with this mycoplasma. That's the way I look at it. And I know that because so many bitches that have no reproductive problems have mycoplasma up to 50%, okay? So just because I get a culture with mycoplasma doesn't mean I 
say, oh my gosh, I'm going to treat for that. Having said that, and I think I do say that. <laughs> okay, well, let's keep going. Okay, so here it is. Up to 50% of males, and that's the other thing, too, is that everybody seems to want to culture the girls, right? The boys have as bad a stuff growing in their pre as girls do. So the, the males who say, I'm not going to breed to that girl unless she has a negative culture, or whatever that might be. The boys should be, they should be cultured as well. Same type of deal. They have all the same stuff hanging around their pre -pews, okay? So that's important to know. In fact, about up to 75% of females, 50% of males have this mycoplasma hanging around in the tract. <coughs> Uh, aeros aeros aerosolization, so they can sneeze it out on, and then uh, venereal also, so breeding. Probably more common than herpes is breeding mycoplasma. Implicated, just implicated as a cause for infertility. And so that's what I was going to say is that if I have a bitch that I'm working up for infertility, I will, if I see, I'll culture her still. I say, I say still, I have another uh, thing to tell you. Um, I'll interpret that culture and then we'll decide are we going to treat it. So there's a little bit of an art to treating it because one bitch I might see mycoplasma and I'll say, oh, we're not going to treat it. And the next bitch I'll see mycoplasma and I'll say, okay, we're going to treat that one. So it, it's all individual, okay? It's not that if we see it, then we treat it, okay? So several studies. Um, we talked about this equal uh, infertile infertile. So, so we can't say, oh, it's present. That's why she's infertile. However, if she is infertile, and I get this, especially in a high growth. A lot of times I'll treat her for it. Just that right. Okay. So it's not just because we recover it doesn't mean we're going to treat. It. However, sometimes we do treat. It. That's clear as mud, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. so it's case by case basis. The tricky part now is we're getting some docs who, who will see it and treat it every single time and treat it with big, powerful antibiotics. Now all of a sudden we wiped out some of the other vaginal flora that's important. So just keep that in your mind. And that's, I think, you know, I see, I see some recipes, recipes of treating the infertile bitch with uh, certain things and holy cow, maybe we'll do some of that stuff, but maybe we won't do some of that stuff. So it's all like, Okay, symptoms. Again, upper respiratory, high inflammation. A lot of times we miss, we even miss these when they out. Because maybe they're just, you might think it's allergies a day or two, something like that. And then it's totally gone. A couple days. That's it. Now they have it. So um, it can be bad though, just like anything, right? I mean, if they're immunocompromised or, you know, very old, or maybe have other problems, they can. They, it can turn into pneumonia. Mycoplasma pneumonia is a big deal. It's a big deal in humans, it's a big deal in dogs. Okay? So if it has the opportunity to cause a problem, it will. It causes uh, uh, bladder, urinary tract, vaginal ball, uh, infertility. I should have a question mark there. Maybe I didn't know. Question mark. We know it does. It has been linked to infertility. It's just not definitively diagnosed, just if we find it. Okay? Joint disease, polyarthritis, and some systemic illness. Those are extreme cases. Neurologic problems also. Here's how we culture. That's a double guarded culture, deep vaginal culture. That's that thing's about that long. So it's kind of a this is the this is the cotton swab part <coughs> inside this sleeve. The reason that's important, oh, I don't know if I have a picture of it. You have to have a deep guarded vaginal culture because we want to get the cranial vaginal ball. The re what I was going to say before is that's controversial now, right? Because now what they've done is they've gone to more sensitive diagnostic testing for what bacteria are present in certain areas of the dog, okay? And it's through replicating the DNA of the bacteria. And if that's present, we know that bacteria was there, okay? That's the short, short version. So what we found is the bacteria that's present in the cranial vaginal ball is not more closely related to what's in the uterus. It's, it's not as closely related. In fact, their oral cavity is more closely related to the bacteria that's in their uterus. Okay? So there's more to come on that. So we're becoming better at uh, looking at the sensitivity of what bacteria are present. Okay? So, 
uh, we sp this is what we're doing still for dog, deep card guarded vaginal culture with evidence of infection. That's when we start to treat, which is inflammatory cells, discharge, et cetera. Uh, that's what we just talked about. Culture is limited correlation with what's really going on in the uterus. For now, that's all we have. Okay? So I still do it, and I interpret each case individually. Not as a breed, not as a line, not nothing like that. There are some antibiotics before Yes, terrifying. Even without uh, Right, terrifying. So requiring antibiotics for breeding. And, and that's an interesting thing, right? Because I hear a little bit more about that. Um, if you have to have a bitch, or a dog for that matter, on antibiotics to breed, something else is wrong. Because it's never supposed to work that way, right? And I tell my clients that. Not that we're not gonna look for what's wrong, or try to figure it out, but if the bitch has to be on antibiotics to be pregnant, something else is up. Mm -hmm. So treatment, uh, not beta-lactam antibiotics, right? So that's that cell wall thing. So things like amoxicillin, clavamox, cephalosporins, can't use those <laughs> for mycoplasma. Use things like doxycycline, uh, enrofloxacin, so those are expensive, especially in your breed. It goes by size, right? So Vatrol's not as bad as it used to be. I remember when it first came out. It was really expensive when it first came out. Um, so those are the antibiotics you have to use for mycoplasma. Prevention, decreased stress, it's opportunistic. So if you have a problem or think you have a problem, decrease their stress. That's travel, stress, that's heat stress, cold stress, other dog stress, stress. Keep them healthy otherwise. Make sure they're good. You guys all do that. This isn't the group I need to tell about. Keep them healthy otherwise. <laughs> so, cleanliness, all my clients do. You guys are the best at that. In fact, some of my clients were like, can you come over and check out my thing? I want to make sure I have it clean it up. And they're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you eat on the floor in here. <laughs> <laughs> they make me take my clothes off and step on the thing before I even come in their house. You know? <laughs> Put on this suit before you come in. <laughs> Which is great, right? But some, sometimes it's a little overboard, right? Um, but most of my clients, they keep their place so clean anyway. Um, so, but that, again, that's a thing. Um, keeping a clean um, environment, that's for herpes too, that's for all the opportunistic stuff around. Okay, any more questions on that? Yeah. yeah. You said originally for herpes that there's no treatment available in the U.S. Is there treatment elsewhere in the world? Um, vaccine, right, for herpes? Yeah. Uh, yes, every other country in the world has a herpes. <laughs> for dogs. Why is it the US? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, I shouldn't say every other country. Most of the other developed countries, Europe, uh, New Zealand, Australia, all the other countries that are interested in dog stuff have it. It's made by a big company. I think Pfizer has one. Fort Dodge might have one. So in the other countries, I, I don't know. I think it might be a, a size of market thing related to how, how it would be uh, an FDA approval process. I think that's why they don't do it here. Yeah, we would all like it. There's a lot of stuff on our list that we would like as reproductive veterinarians for sure um, that would help our clients immensely. Early on. Is it available? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it available in Mexico? Probably. I think it is available in Mexico. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. We were only out of here to look at all the people. Yes, I'm going to make a cow's litter after that. They don't. Is that a cow's scene? No, that's right. So that's a good question, right? So I know this sounds weird, right? So for the herpes stem, we want our breeding bitches before we breed them to be positive for herpes. We want them to be exposed to herpes because that's the way that they get vaccinated in this country for herpes, right? So once they're positive and they have that litter, they won't lose that litter to herpes, subsequent litters. Now if they get herpes while they're pregnant, they'll probably abort. If they're exposed to, if they're not exposed to herpes, they nurse the babies, they don't pass on the immunity, the babies have this fading puppy syndrome, because that's one of the signs of herpes, right? The babies die, let's say you lose the whole litter, you couldn't save them. 
now you want that bitch to be exposed to herpes, and once she's exposed, she won't lose subsequent life. How do you expose them? Right. Dog park. Yeah. Dog, dog, shows. <laughs> dog shows. Dog shows. Dog shows. Being around other dogs. Being around other dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can herpes cause a resorbing of puppies? Yes. Yeah. So they can. They can. They can experience abortion at any time during gestation. So there are certain things that cause like late-term abortion, like for instance, brucellosis. That's late-term abortion. That's a week or two weeks before they deliver and they spontaneously abort. Herpes can cause abortion any time during gestation. So you can see gestational sacs and three weeks later look again and they're all gone. That could okay. be herpes. I'm talking about a case where a bitch was x-rayed, we saw 12 skeletons in there, she never delivered a litter of puppies, and when a couple of days uh, passed and she should have delivered, yeah. uh, they wanted to do another x-ray and there were no puppies in there. Yeah, so they can't resorb once the bones are <laughs> calcified. <laughs> so they went somewhere. Well, I was with her all the time. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Where they would have gone. So they can't resorb once the, because she, yeah. the, the endometrium doesn't have the ability to resorb bone. Uh -huh. So well, the bones would stay We did in see all those puppies on an X-ray. Yeah. And they were they were not delivered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless, well, I can see you know, <laughs> possibly she could have delivered them when I was asleep and, and consumed yeah. them. Yes. But the it was the vets. Um, feeling that she resorbed those puppies. Yeah, too late. So typically after day 45, they can't resorb of yeah. gestation. Yeah, good question. I'm sorry, I had to step out for a few yeah. minutes. So if you've already addressed this, just tell me to sure. go away. <coughs> what do you think is the optimum way to breed a bitch? Do you do you recommend skipping cycles or do you recommend oh, skipping yeah. back to back? Great because question. I'm told <laughs> that the progesterone level remains high even if they're not bred making the uterus and the bitch think she's had a litter. Yes. So there's really no advantage to skipping if you've got a healthy, strong, vital right. bit. Okay. Yeah, so that's a good question, right? Do we, dogs are set up to breed back to back. They're pack animals, historically, and they're litter bearing species. So they're set up to breed, 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 not breed. And the not breed is whenever you spay them or do whatever. So I am a proponent of breed, as long as they're good, good mamas, right? Good body condition, good temperament towards the puppies, all of that important stuff to breed back to back. There's reasons not to breed back to back, but there's, there's reasons to do it. Unfortunately, there are some breeds still that uh, their, their club will prohibit three in a row. They'll do back to back and then they make them skip one. They recently, and I remember when they wouldn't even let them do back to back. Mm -hmm. So now they're letting them do back to back. And I know soon they'll let them do back to back to back and then, and then that. That's a good question. Because they, they have the same hormones whether they're pregnant or not. Yeah. Yeah. Is litter size a uh, determining factor in whether you, someone would normally recommend back to back? I mean, if, if a fish has had 11 puppies, do you, do you, sometimes you feel like, oh my God, I don't want her. You know, she should do that again right away. That yeah, means. so it depends on mammary gland development, body condition, mothering ability, number of puppies, it wouldn't matter. Her uterus is fully involuted by the time she's ready to bleed, ready to breed again, unless she's short, short cycle. So she has to have that normal amount of time between cycles. But if she's short, short cycling, I'd say no way. But if she's cycling appropriately, even if she has 11 or 10 or 13's pushing it a little, but I've seen that as well. And then I, I saw 13 and then 8 in the same bitch. And she did great. But it's all individual. It's all individual, yeah. What about C-sections? Bitches and rats. Right. Yeah, C-sections. Good question. So those are tougher. And specifically the English bulldog, right? Because what we used to do was <coughs> surgical insemination, C-section. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, that would be appropriate, Mama Mia, right? Right. Yeah. So that's the deal, right? Surgical insemination, C-section. Surgical insemination, C-section. Surgical insemination, C-section. That's hard on them. So, if they're requiring C-sections each time, it's a, 
I, I, I tend to want to give them a break in between. If, if we're putting them under that much, that's just me. I like them to deliver naturally if at all possible, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I, you did that with one of my bitches. Mm -hmm. We had a C-section. You said, let's do it natural the second time, and we did. Yeah. They can do it. They can. So yeah. vaginal birth after cesarean mm -hmm. section is okay in dogs, depending on the reason yeah. for the C-section. Yeah. Yeah. Healthy German Shepherd bitches, mm -hmm. non-surgical deliveries, what would be the upper age limit when you'd say? Oh, boy, that's bring a great them. question. Shouldn't bring them. I should ask you guys that. <laughs> so, and I discussed this with a theory of genealogy, a theory of genealogist colleague of mine, a month ago. But we didn't go breed by breed, right? We just went in general, generally speaking. When do you want to start breeding them? When do you want to stop them? There is some breed variation, okay? Generally speaking, two years old, seven years old. You don't want to breed past seven, you don't want to breed before two. Those are just general, general rules. I'm not saying that a healthy bitch can't have a litter at seven years old in this breed. It's pushing it, okay? And by, by pushing it, I'm not saying, I'm just saying conception rate, here's what I'm basing it on. Conception rate, litter sizes, ability to deliver naturally. That's what I'm interested in, right? I want appropriate conception rates, litter sizes, and I want her to have the best chance of delivering naturally. And I think two to seven is your sweet spot. Probably two to six, really. Once you get get a little bit. But it, there's individual variation too. So, but that's kind of if someone asked me like you just did, those would be kind of my numbers. Yeah. Yeah. If your bitch is kept in optimal physical yeah. condition, yes. yes. Would that, you know, would for you sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. not. Probably not younger than two, I'm kind of picky about no, that. Older. But a little older than older than that. And again, some breeds. I I learned greyhounds, right? Greyhound, a seven year old greyhound is no big deal as a maiden bitch having a litter. I was like, what? <laughs> so it's a thing. Yeah. Uh, what do you term as short cycle? Yeah, anything less than normal. Okay. Yeah. Six months. Yeah, so I like I like every six months. Um, I like them to have four months of anestrus. If they're less than three months, and that's the question you're asking. No, five months. Well, if I like them to have uh, that, and so that would include that would include estrus, diestrus, anestrus, roughly six months. Roughly six months is what I would want. If they're Four months or less, that's my red flag. Mm -hmm. Five months, I'm not as worried about, but I'm watching them. Four months or less, mm, they're short cycling. That's okay, I don't mind that. Yeah, longer cycles, I don't mind. Um, it's healthier for them, for their uterus, to have a little bit longer cycle because it gives them more time to recover their uterus, their endometrium, to recover. Okay, good question. Yeah. I have a question about the machine. Yes. About. Everything that I used to do was done with the IDEX, but I didn't with less now. It yeah. says that I have the mini bias. Yeah. 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 They aren't the same. They're the not the same. Not the That's right. So how do I translate that? I mean, yeah. I don't have to tell me that's like. Yeah. You can have free trust your vet on the day. Right. So the question is uh, interpreting numbers with a mini bias machine versus an IDEX machine. What hopefully, or what we're telling the docs to do, is take your mini vitus number, convert it to an IDEX number, and just tell your client that. Don't <laughs> tell them your mini vitus number and give them a, a sheet to convert it. Because when they do that, it confuses everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that's a good question. We have different units too, millimoles versus nanograms, right? Yeah. So what I'm having, hopefully, hopefully the doctors to do is convert that number to, a, to what everybody knows. Because mini vitus is common now. We we got our first one over 10 years ago, but they've been around for 20 years in the veterinary world. Um, so the number's fine. It'll be accurate, but it needs to be converted to something we're, we're all familiar with. Because all these numbers that I just put up here, those are all what we think is IDEX, ANTEC, all of our traditional numbers. Yeah. So for example, he might say, oh, her progesterone is 12. I think she's ovulating today because typically those numbers are, are a little higher. Where I would say, 
I think she's ovulating around five or six. So they should, what state are you in? Iowa. Okay. I don't know if I know anybody there in Iowa. But they, they should convert it to a, to a, uh, yeah. Do you know if the, hosp the ones in the hospitals were similar? Are they They're all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, some of them use minivitis in the hospital. Some of them use emulites. A lot of them use emulites now um, in hospitals. And they're nice machines. But that machine is not calibrated to. So you just have to maybe do one on that machine and do one on the machine and do and see how they compare. Or the two thousand. Same sample. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we did, right? So what we did was our mini vitus machine in hospital. Literally two thousand. I would do the sample there and send it to the lab. Do the sample there. Send it about pages and pages, and pages of results that the students would then make a curve, and then we would say. <coughs> give it to the stats guy, and the stats guy says, that here's your chart. I'm not the stats guy. That's how they do it. Yep. Yep. Well, there's a new IDEX machine out that's in-house. Has anybody heard about that one? Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so up until five or six, I think it's super accurate. Uh, over five, it's not. <laughs> As accurate, <laughs> so so, and they and they will tell you that it's not as accurate over over five nanograms. The in-house machine. You want the Hesca one? I don't know enough about Hesca. Hesca has a machine too. Hesca is a local company here. They're a publicly traded company. They have a machine out. I just don't know a lot about it yet. I don't know a lot of people who have it. I'll just get it published for sure. <laughs> yeah, let me know. I did, well, I did for years. Now I'm old, so I don't have the But now, IDEX is nice to me because I've used them 25 years almost. Um, I can get same day results even from IDEX, but typically I'll send them in. And I email my clients usually between 6 and 7 in the morning. So we have a plan either for that day or the following day when I will make plans for brief. Is that like I Yeah, yeah, most, okay. most of the Yeah, yeah. So do you recommend routine culturing for bitches that aren't showing any signs of problems? I don't. Uh, that, there we get that question. Routine culturing, I don't. I don't I don't recommend routine antibiotics or culture. And I don't have a problem if a male owner wants to have a bitch culture, we do that, but then I want the male culture too. <laughs> yeah. You know, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> right? So then we'll have a male culture too, just so we don't. Okay, thank you, thanks for having me.